Let's say that we have three small ponds. So this is pond A, this is pond B, and this is pond C over here. And let's say that this first pond right over here, it's a privately owned pond. It's owned by, it's owned by Al. And this pond over here is owned by Carol. Is owned by Carol. But this middle pond, pond B, I guess we called it to start off with, this is common land, or I guess this is a common pound, or this is open to the public. Open, open to the public. Open to the public. And let's say that Al and Carol, they're both fisher. I guess Carol would be a fisher, uh, a, a fisher woman. <laughs> they're, they're, they, they both like to fish. That's how they make their living. And Al, in his, in his pond, he has fish in there. And he does some fishing in his, in his pond. But he makes sure not to overfish, because he doesn't want to deplete the stock of fish he has. So he fishes just enough that he can, he can pay his bills and whatever else, but not so much that it depletes the fish and essentially makes them extinct in his pond. So he doesn't want to overfish. And Carol does the same thing. She's got fish in her pond, and, but, and she uses them to make a living. She, she t gets them out and sells them and eats them and whatever else. But she's careful not to overfish, because if she overfished, then there wouldn't be fish. There wouldn't be a next generation of fish. But over here in this public pond, there are also fish. There are also fish. I'll draw their fish in orange. There are also fish in this public pond over here. They're smiling. Maybe they won't be smiling for long. And what is going to happen? Anyone can go and fish in this public pond. So Al might say, and we're just assume we're in a world of two people. Obviously, the real world has more than two people. Al will say, OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be very careful in my own pond. I'm going to fish just enough that I don't deplete the fish there. But I could, any extra fish I need, I could go over here to this public pond and fish all I want. And I might be concerned about depletion in the public pond, except for the fact if I'm concerned about depletion, that's still not going to help the situation because other people might come and still and still not be so concerned. And so I won't even get the benefit of the depletion if I hold back and other people come and deplete the pond. And so when you have this pond that is open to the public, all of the, all of the surrounding people, whether it's Al or Carol, or I guess you could have other people here, they would say, look, I'm going to fish here. I'm going to get some benefit. And even if I overfish, my benefit, the benefit of overfishing, I'm going to get. I, in the near term, I'm going to get all of those fish. And then the cost of that overfishing, which is in the future, there won't be as many fish or any, no, fishes, no fish at all, that's going to be spread out amongst everyone else. And so you have the situation where you have, because there's no one. I guess you could say either owning this land or there's no one protecting this lake or however you want to describe it. You have there there's a a rational and I want to be clear rational does not always mean good. There rational actors might decide to overfish. Decide to overfish and, and essentially by doing that everyone's going to be worse off. They're going to destroy the productivity of this pond. They're going to destroy the productivity productivity of the pond, of the pond right over here. And this idea that if there's this common land or common resource, in this case it was a pond, and people can spread out the costs and they get the benefits directly, you essentially you have a situation where that, that shared resource can get abused. And this is called the tragedy of the commons. So this is the tragedy, tragedy of the commons. Where in this, in the example we did here, the pond is the common space that's being that's being abused, and it's a it's especially a tragedy. And I've already hinted at this already. Is that even if Al decides that hey, you know what, I'm going to hold back a little bit. I'm not going to fish so much because I don't want to deplete it. He'll say, but wait, if I do that, if I do that, other people are going to come and deplete it. So I have no incentive to hold back. And so other people are also going to have the same logic, and then this thing is going to get overfished here. And the first, cl the the classic example of tragedy of the commons, where the example was first given, was common grazing land. Same exact idea. If this was private grazing land over here where I can keep my cows and my sheep, and this is private grazing land over here where someone else has their cow and sheep, but this over here is literally a commons where anyone can graze their cow and sheep, then just like the fishing, huge incentive for people to let their cow and sheep maybe overgraze the land, destroy the land, make it not sustainable. But 
the costs of it are going to be shared by everyone else, and the benefit of overgrazing, at least in the near term, you, the, the, the person who's overgrazing, is going to get from it. And you might even say, I'm not even the one overgrazing it. It's all of us collectively overgrazing, so you don't blame me. Now, what is the solution to the tragedy of the commons? How, how does a government or a jurisdiction or a group of people avoid this type of destruction of a resource? Well, one way that you could do is you could make this somehow into private land. So if that was owned by the government, it could uh, sell it, auction it off to private uh, people who could then sell access to this. Or if the government does retain control of it, it could sell permits to the land. So in this situation, you could sell you could sell permits. So it could figure out, hey, if someone fishes responsibly uh, in a given day, they're going to get, I don't know, $200 of value by doing this. So we're going to make a permit cost, I don't know, $150 so that someone still has an incentive to do it. But that will also limit the amount of fishing that can be there. And you could have some you know, conservationists that make sure that, the, that, that not too many permits are given are given for this space over here. And we see that happening. If you wanted to go hunting, there are permits you need to have. If you want to if you want to go fishing in a lot of places, there are permits that you want to have. If you want to go camping in a lot of places, there are permits because you could even over camp an area. If too many people are walking there, too much trash is there, it could ruin the campgrounds. And so this tragedy of the commons, the best way or the, the way most often seen is through this the, the best way of preventing the tragedy of the commons is through some type of a permitting process.